Welcome to Break Into Tech Show with Professor Temi Akinwumi of My IT University, a multi award winning tech CEO, career coach, and mentor. With decades of hands on tech career, will ensure your career dreams come true. Join our extraordinary show today on groundbreaking topic for a successful career. Do you want a $100,000 job as a cybersecurity professional, scrum master, business analyst software QA, cloud architect, data analyst, technical recruiter, and more? Visit www.myituniversity.com to schedule a call. Come and get inspired to secure a lucrative job. Keep the job and grow on the job. Relax, receive, and see results. We're glad you're here. Share, like, and comment. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining. Welcome, welcome to your Break Into Tech show. This is Professor Temi Akinwumi. I hope you are doing a wonderful, uh, having a wonderful day today, and I hope you are doing well today. Thank you so much for joining me all over the world. I'm so happy to be here, and I'm excited to be here with you on your Break Into Tech show. Here, we help you break into tech, keep the job, and grow on the job. Do you know that you can break into tech without any tech background? Do you know that you don't need to have a tech degree in college to break into tech? Do you also know that you can break into tech without a college degree? If, if you don't know that, then I'm here to share the good news with you and to make sure that you can use what you have to get what you want, which is breaking into tech. And do you know that it's not every area of tech that is coding? Because some people think everything is, oh, you have to code. You have to be in coding. No. There's some area of tech that is no coding, that is more like a paperwork, managerial role, and it's pretty much closer to what you are doing now. And that you have transferable skill that you can use to break into tech. Been in tech for three decades, you know, I've... I've been working in tech for three decades and I've seen it all in tech. I've done everything in tech. Um, a quick introduction, you know, if you're trying to break into tech, stay tight, stay put, get your pen and notepad ready because this is like a classroom. You're going to learn for the next one hour and what you need to do to break into tech. And if you are already in tech, what are you going to do to keep your job and grow on the job? And then, if you are, you know, tired to think, what else can I do with my life? This is it. I'm going to show you what to do. No coding, no scripting, nothing. And um, as you are joining me, I want to welcome you. Anywhere you're joining me from, I want to welcome you. Please, 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 can you drop in the um, in the chat area your name and your location, if you can, and I will welcome you properly so we can get started. So that's what we do here. Um, we are family. We want to make sure that you can achieve your goal in tech. When people tell you to break into tech, but they don't, they don't show you how to break in. What I'm doing is showing you how to break into tech <laughs> and help you break in. We have tons of engineers that we have met on into tech, and a lot of them broke into tech here, and we're still helping them to break into tech. My mentorship is a lifetime mentorship. Every Saturday, I meet with my students, both already working, but people that are already working, people that are trying to break in, I help them, I guide them. I break things down to very easy to understand so that you're easily able to understand it, not using all these big jargons and lingos that you can't even understand and you just run all over the place and everything's running all over your head and everything's all over the place. We don't do that here. Here is family. We wait for you. We guide you. We show you. We actually show you how to break in. So thank you, Rita, for joining. Hello, Rita. I hope you are doing well today. Thank you for being here again. More money from UK. Thank you. I know who you are. Thank you so much. I hope you stay, th stay here with us. Sit tight um, because I have a good news uh, to share with everybody. And um, more money, too. I have a surprise for you today. So stay tight. 
Uh, we have Mumun excited to be here again and to enhance my knowledge of this wonderful domain. Thank you so very much for that. We have Eddie. Good morning, Professor Temi Edward from Maryland. Thank you so much, Edward, for that. Uh, we have Unzelu. Hi, Unzelu. Welcome, Nelson. Oh, Nelson, I know you are from London. We have a lot of people from UK here today. If you are joining us, can you let me know where you are joining us from so I can welcome you properly? Thank you, guys. And the uh, Eddie is from Maryland. As you join, please share with me where you're joining from. If you see anybody that's around you and is struggling financially, tell them whatever job they are paying, they are they are working now. That means that job is not good. It's not good enough, right? Tell them to consider tech. Why don't you consider tech and let them break into tech? Once they can break into tech, the best life has just started because now they can make money. Now they can take care of their family. Some people don't. Even, some people are even making money, but guess what? They don't have time for their family. They're always working on the shift. They don't have time to stay home. They can't guide the children that are their kids. They can't guide their grades. They can't mentor their kids. They are always working. What life is that when you have all the money and your kids are all over the street and they are miserable because you are never there for them. They can't feel you being home to see if they are, you know, they are great to see to their assignment, uh, their homework to see to uh, maybe they need to go to college and help them with something. Or even if they are in elementary school, you are never in anywhere. That is not life. Life is life that's holistic, that has work-life balance. So we need to look into those areas, okay? So when you break into tech, you can work from home, remote work, so you have time for this family, for your spouses, you don't have time for them. They're always working, which is good to work, but then let's balance it. And you, some of you, you walk all the shit, always standing up, your back is aching everywhere, it's aching. See, all this is what I see every day. Let's break into this tech. Don't stop wasting your time that you have all the money and then you are sick because you work so much and you don't rest. So work balance, work-life balance is best. Remote work, good, make good money, doing only one job instead of you doing thousands of jobs, three jobs, two, four jobs and working 13 hour shift. Hey guys, let me calm down, calm down. It's true. Let me calm down, calm down, right? I'm saying that to myself, but I'm so passionate about this thing because this is what I see every single day. And I don't want people to be going through this stress. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's get excited. How do we break into this tech? What can we do, right? So let's see what we can do to make life better for all of you and everybody that's listening to me. Today, we're going to be talking about hard, very hard ISO 27001 interview question that you can ask you in the interview, question that they can ask you in the interview and the answers. And one thing I want you to know is that even though you are not trying to break into ISO, you might be trying to break into PCIDSA. You might be trying to break into other area of cybersecurity. But as you go in, you'll be able to see that, oh, this is applicable to all areas. And the ISO is, um, you know, international. So international standard organization. So you can use it anywhere in the world. My students are in Germany, in UK, in all of, in Canada. So it's not only in the US, in Spain. They use ISO everywhere in the world. So it's good to know. ISO is very, um, it's very important to know. Anybody can use it. Any organization can implement it. And you will notice that a lot of organizations now, it, you can't even find you can't even find the document free. They sell it. The, the, the ISO themselves are selling this document. That's how important it is. So sit tight. Don't play with this thing. Okay. So sit tight. We're going to be sharing that with you and also guide you to, to, to get started. Okay. So please share this on all your social media platforms. Share, share, share. Share. Nana, welcome. I see you. Welcome. How are you doing today? I hope you are doing well. Yeah, so that's what it is. And if you are trying to reach me, please, uh, my number is there. If you are trying to get into our, you know, any of our classes, we have a class starting in March. March night is our next class. It's a Saturday class. We're going to talk more about that later. And the best thing is to schedule a call with me, www.myituniversity.com. 
so I can guide you to breaking into tech. Okay, so we're gonna get started. Before um, we continue, I'm gonna share with you a testimonial with one of from one of the students, and and you know you need to listen to that. So let me share that quickly. My name is Mumuni, and um, I recently invested in the AI uh, treasure box. Uh, for those preparing for interviews, it's a wonderful addition, uh, an asset, a resource to have in your toolkit. And um, yeah, it covers a range of topics uh, from resume and uh, LinkedIn uh, optimization. And it also goes into um, all the um, frameworks such as uh, NIST, RMF, ISO, uh, third party risk, vendor management, and PCI DSS. Uh, we have to remember, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Temi, she's gone into uh, a lot of pain and effort into crafting or uh, creating this uh, product for us. Uh, we're leveraging uh, 30 years um, of experience in the IT cyberspace. And again, it's a wonderful investment to have uh, uh, going forward. And also, you can also gift it to uh, the... Um, the young ones in our family looking to get into the tech world uh, it's uh, it's a wonderful resource to have and um, i personally have never regretted um, it's a must have for every um, professional uh, cyber security professional and uh, yeah you never uh, regret um, having one as i found it very 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 useful and i wish you all the best in your journey and uh, bye for now Okay, guys, so that's testimonial from Mumuni. Um, we got the trial box and he's been using it, you know. It's actually here with us. So, <laughs> you know, so you can you can you can get it. And actually, it's actually on sale now. Is um it's on sale for the president's day is is um 30% off, more than 30% off actually. So right now it's on, on sale on our website, $199 off. <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome, Mumuni. You know, that's a testimonial right there. Um, break into tech. Use that. You need a trial box. It's actually built into our curriculum now. If you are a student, you must have it. So, um, yes, you must have it. So, it's, that's how good it is. So, everybody in Night University is having that. So, if you are sitting in, on the bench on that, prepping, if you are in tech or trying to break in, you must get a trial box. Very important. So thank you so very much. So we're going to get started and discussing about um, our interview prep today. You know, it's wonderful. And um, we're going to make it happen. We're going to make sure you break into tech. Not breaking into tech is a sin. Like I said, I'm all in for tech. I'm all in to make as many people as possible to break into this tech. You must break in. We, you must break it. You must make it in tech. You must become a tech, you a tech engineer, a tech architect, uh, everything you want to be in cybersecurity, the foremost. And you might be wondering, I, I have four degrees in tech. I have, I'm working on my fifth one, which I'm almost finishing, PhD in uh, Doctor of IT. You know, and you'll be wondering, why do I like this tech so much that I'm going to the last, you know, like the last degree? If you can say that and i have like oh many certifications right so we say why do you what do you see in this tech <laughs> tech it is and you ask me also why do you see in cyber security ah hmm. because i've done everything in in tech right cyber security is the foremost i've done coding front end back end networking everything you can think of project support there's nothing Compared to cybersecurity, I can say that a thousand times. So you see, there's something in this cybersecurity that I love it so much, even with all my other experience that I've had in all the other areas of tech. Compliance is no coding, no scripting. And this particular framework is one of the major areas that you want to be. There, there's no way we will not have jobs in that area, the, this compliance area. There's so many jobs, so many jobs in it. One of my students that got into 200k jobs actually got a second job. Hey, I was like, what? You just got started like how many months ago? Now you got another job, you know? 
I'm going to be bringing some of them in to speak with me during the Women History Month. They are making, and the second job is close to 200 too. So I was like, I'm telling you guys, don't play, don't play. Break into tech is possible. A lot of people are breaking in. Let's help you to break in. So hot, very hot, right? Also. 27,001 interview question explained. Here, and we're going to be going through the questions that can ask in the interview for ISO, and we're going to explain it live here for you. Okay? Don't forget to share with others. So, this presentation provides a detailed understanding of the key concept of the ISO 27001, including risk management controls and continuous improvement. Because we want to be able to look at, you know, all these components under ISO, and it also covers various questions and answer relating to the ISO, such as its focus, the key, key component implementation process, risk assessment, information security controls, and policy, okay? So all this thing will be covered, and also, in at my IT university here, we also are not only teach you the theoretical part, but also the hands-on. We have our own cloud enterprise environment that we subscribe to. We pay for that yearly, and all the students are able to practice on even the platform that you know we use, you know, for our customers too, so that they can know what to do with these um, frameworks. We have a lot of framework here. Okay, a day will come that I will actually show you the platform and share some things with you on it. Okay, so we every Saturday we mentor students on the platform. As I mentioned, we have a classes coming up in March, and um, the March class is um, is um, it's gonna start on March night, night of March, and we have the cybersecurity GRC class on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time. And Security Plus, we have it on Saturdays, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern Time. So make sure you schedule a call with me on my ituniversity.com so I can get you started on your journey and guiding you, put you in the pipeline. We have a pipeline ready for that class. So reach out so you can be in the pipeline. And you can also share with your friends and family. Okay? Like I said, the uh, trailer box, we have it on sale. It's now uh, on sale on our website for President's Day. Get um, go grab your copy if you don't have one. Okay. Okay, let's go. So introduction to ISO 7001. So we're going to have some question and answer series as well. And I'm going to be explaining a lot to you. So you will learn a lot from this today. This framework and standard focus in providing a systematic approach to managing sensitive company information and ensuring its confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So in other words, the objective behind cybersecurity and even the ISO frame standard is to make sure that our information is confidential, there's integrity, and we see information is always available. When I talk about confidentiality, what am I saying? Let's share that. Let's break that. Let's elaborate on that for the benefit of people that are new to the environment or to cybersecurity. What is confidentiality? What is integrity? And what is availability? Can you share with me in the chat what that is? Let's see. If, I'm trying to test you what you have known. Um, you know, coming to our platform, confidentiality. Who is sharing with me? Can you all hear me? <laughs> okay, I'm waiting on you. So I think myself that someone is international standard organization, you know, is you know, for you know information security management system. So that's what we use it for. I'm waiting on you. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So one prevent unauthorized disclosure. Okay, maybe I'll just share it. I know you probably type in and it's low in your area. Maybe. Um, okay. It's okay. Some people are sharing now. Nah, nah. Confidentiality is non-disclosure, unauthorized, prevent unauthorized disclosure of information. Okay, very good. German, German said information is available to unauthorized user only. Very good. 
Um, Eddie said, Eddie said CIA triad. Yeah, I know it's CIA triad, but I'm saying what is confidential. So it's prevent unauthorized disclosure of information. So on 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 unauthorized disclosure of information to uh, individual systems, right? So what our integrity prevent the unauthorized modification or destruction of information, and availability is ensuring that information and data is available. You know, you know, it's available to uh, it's available, it's accessible, and you know, in a timely manner to so whoever needs it, they can get it. So if they can't get it, that's a problem. So um, when they say mean, potentially mean information is only accessible to uh, yeah, uh, yeah, authorized users. Yeah, exactly. Thank you so very much, guys. Thank you. That's it. That's it. So I'm more people that are not even know anything about tech, that didn't have any information about tech before. When they come to this platform, they learn a lot. And uh, that's a blessing. I got calls from everywhere, every time, every day. People say, thank you. Thank you for this platform. I learned a lot. Thank you. I learned my job. Thank you, this, that. You know, you can't, I can't tell you enough. People coming to this platform, learning 170K, 180K job from here. And I don't know them. They just come and thank me. Okay. So they said they've never seen any platform with so much information like here. So that, thank you, Nana. Nana said, Integrity, not tampering of information yet. And money is integrity protecting sensitive data from authorized notification. Very good, guys. Thank you very much for that. The key component of ISO, risk management, controls, and continuous improvement. Risk management, identify, assessing, and treating information security risk. So every, there's, you know, organization will have risk. There will always be risk in organization, but we have to identify those risks. We have to identify them. We have to assess them. We have to treat them. We're going to break those down later. Controls. And you know risk is what? What is the formula for risk? What is the formula for risk? Like today, we're having a test today. But I'm asking you all this question, right? What is risk? What is the formula for risk? When your asset is vulnerable and threat is exploiting the vulnerability of that asset, then you are at risk. When you, I will just break it down to the, to, so that I can use the component of asset, um, threat and vulnerability. When your, when your uh, asset is what you are trying to protect is at risk. Your asset is at risk when your asset is vulnerable, and then threat is exploited that vulnerability. Then you are at risk. Okay. Control implement security control to mitigate. Identify risk controls. These are just these are just countermeasures, and you know that you can you can put in place. These are countermeasures. These are your these are just like your checklist of activities that you have to do to mitigate the risk that you can be in to mitigate the the, the situation, the risk, the threat to make sure that the threat cannot exploit the the uh, vulnerability of our asset. So, and so that you can be in compliance. So, when you manage all these things, then you are controlling. So, the, the, the security control is just a way of controlling the security of your assets. <laughs> I'm going to write my own book now because I'm bringing it from all these angles, right? Very good. I see my money saying uh, risk is VAT. And Nana said, uh, V means vulnerability, A is asset, asset and threat is what? And T is threat, VAT, VAT, right? Vulnerability, asset, and threat. Very good. And um, Nana said, likelihood for plus, uh, uh, multiplied by impact. Very good. And German B said, vulnerability, threat, um, multiplied by threat, multiplied by impact. Um, okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Um, so that's what it is, uh, uh, and that's what it is. It's very important that we note all of that. So continuous improvement, gradually reviewing and updating the ISMS to adapt to change in threats and business requirement. We have to continually improve and make sure that we're in compliance. Yes, very good. So, 
So when you want to implement the ISO, it's very versatile and it can be used in any organization. It doesn't matter your type, your size, and all of that. So it's very important. So let's start with our first question. So, so have your pen and notepad ready. It took me three hours, well, sometimes three hours to put all this down, this da da da, all night doing, putting all, all the questions and the presentations. I always come with all these presentations. So it takes time and do, doing the flyer, the little stuff. You know, sometimes I do this thing myself, you know, so um, it takes time. So enjoy it. <laughs> What does ISO 27001 primarily really focus on? What does it focus on primarily? I know it's focused on so many things, but what is the primary focus? A, business continuity. B, information security management. C, quality, quality management. And D, environmental management. I see people putting the answer in the chat already. Put your answer in the chat for me. Put your answer in the chat for me, please. Okay, so let's see. I'm seeing a lot of Bs. Guys are putting B, B, B. Let's see. Okay, guys, you are correct. The answer is B. Information security management. Let's elaborate. ISO 27001 primarily focus on information security management. It provides a framework for organization to establish, implement, and maintain and continuously improve on information security, information security management system to protect sensitive data and manage security risk effectively. So at the end of the day, we want to make sure that is managing the risk, not only managing it, but also making sure it's managing the risk as effectively. Mm -hmm. We're going to break down into what the risk can be and how to, what you can do to mitigate those risks. You might mitigate it, you might transfer it, you might accept it. There's so many things you can do to your risk in an organization. Question two, which of the following is not and noting, not a key component of ISO 27001 framework. It's not, right? A, risk assessment. B, security policy. C, human resources management. And D, information security management system, ISMS. Which one is not? These guys are hot today. They are not playing at all. Uh, we have Nana say C, Tessa say C, Rita C, and um, Olu also said C. Okay, let's find out. Boom, C, human resource management. Elaborate. It's not a key component of ISO 27001 framework. The key component include risk assessment, security policy, and the information security management system, which serve as the core structure of managing information security. So risk assessment, assessing risk, security policy. Every organization will have a policy, right? And, um, and also managing the information system. Very good, guys. You all did well. Next question. Which phase of ISO 27001 implementation process involves defining the scope of ISMA? When do you define the scope? Which phase? A, risk assessment. <laughs> A, risk assessment. B, management review. C, planning, and D, monitoring and measurement. Which phase of the ISO 27001 implementation process involves defining the scope? R Rita said, the first question gave answer to the second question. <laughs> That's what it should be. That's what it should be. So give me answer for this one. Which phase of the ISO? 
chapter 7001 implementation process involves defining the scope of the ISMS. Which one? Which one, guys? Vote, vote, vote. What's your answer here? Let me see. Or oh, this one caught you off guard. Okay. So Nana, only Lana, only only okay. <laughs> I hope some people are saying whatever Nana votes, I will vote. Because I'm not seeing people voting. I only see Nana votes C, then Rita, then Olu. C. Okay, let's find out. Very good. Can you ask a question during interview? Yes, now. Yeah, can they ask? They can. They will. They can tweak it. Yeah, they can. They can. Any question can come. And oh, so and so. When did you do so and so? So that's why you need to understand the ISO framework. ISO is very versatile. Um, it's um, it's something that you need to know because if you are going to be working in any industry in all over the world, you always see ISO everywhere. So it's good to understand it. Yes. Everything begins with planning. Even in, in the RMA, we call it prepare, which is planning. So if the plan ahead, that's when you do not know the scope. The scope is just what? How far are we going with this? What are we doing with this? How far? What's the, what the boundary? What are we touching? So you want to know. Everything is planning. They have to plan the scope of it. Mm -hmm. So plan, elaborate the Planning phase of ISO implementation involves defining the scope of the, of the ISMS. This includes determining the boundaries of what information assets will be covered, which system is covered, which and stakeholders will be involved, and all of that. They have to plan. If you don't plan, how do you budget? How do you know what to do? So planning ahead is always going to be the, the, the one of the core key components of success of any project. So covered by the ISO, ISMS and the objective to be achieved. Why are we doing this? Hmm? Why are we doing this? So it's very important. Yeah, yeah. And um, um, Nana says, sometimes we have to do elimination by substitution with some of these multiple choice questions. Yeah, you have to do, you know, see which one is not likely to be, like I always say, and then you'll be able to know. And they can ask you in the interview, when do you, or when we're talking about, you know, they can ask you, ah, oh, okay, uh, working in, in, in this industry for a while, um, when you're trying to define the scope of, um, of the project, or, or of your, um, you know, of your project, when do you, do we really do that? And then you'll be looking at them like, um, they will give you the answer. So you, if you say prepare, stage or planning stage then the that's you are still okay but without you have to know that you define scope early right so that's one thing you have to take away from here today okay question four let's go thank you guys what is the purpose of yeah what's the purpose of the risk assessment in the context of ISO 27,001. What is the purpose of risk assessment? A. To identify potential risk, security threats, and vulnerability. A. I'm, I will take it away. A. You're already voting. Uh -uh. You are fast. A. To identify potential security threats and vulnerability. B. To assess financial risks to the organization. C to evaluate employee performance and D to determine marketing strategy. Mm, interesting. So let's do elimination by substitution. Let's take some some out. So I see a lot of you saying A hey, now. Well, financial what? <laughs> evaluate employee performance. Ah, no. And D marketing. Ah, no, that's not even close. So you'll be able to know that it's A, right? So everybody say A. Hey, sir. Carl, welcome. How are you doing today? 
Yeah, German B said, tell me about a time when this question will look like exam for certification. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, they are. This question are, can use in certifications and all these questions are exam questions uh, as well as they are questions that are, uh, and they are from the trial box. All these are from the trial box. So go and get your copy. They are from there. Everything you see me coming here, I come here with, and there's a lot in there, really. So it's A, identifies potential security threat and vulnerability. Yes, very good. Elaborate. The purpose of risk assessment is the, in the context of ISO 2001 is to identify potential security threats and vulnerability that could impact you know, confidentiality, integrity, and availability of your asset. And this helps organization understand the risk landscape the risk landscape and implement appropriate control to mitigate this risk. Hmm? Yes, very good, guys. Please share, share, share on your social media platform. Share this broadcast, share it. And as you are here listening to me, make sure you subscribe to, your, to our YouTube channel. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on um, Facebook and also on um, LinkedIn. Okay? So enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Thank you for being here. Um, get your trailer box. Get your trailer box. Thank you, Carl. I see you from Germany. Hello, fellow sports professional. And I'm doing fine. Thanks. I hope you too. I'm privileged to be here learning from the best of the best professor. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, you, you came late. You will have seen the presentation of um, maybe you didn't come late. I'm not sure. But I was looking out for you too, to see if I'll see you, Carl um from germany thank you so much um yeah thank you very much everybody thank you i really appreciate your being here and i don't take it lightly people that are present here <laughs> what did you say rita that's fast professor timmy i know it's fast right yeah <laughs> okay come again get your trailer box <laughs> Okay, let's keep going. I was reading fast. You know, you have to read fast sometimes. And you have to read slow sometimes. <laughs> okay, question five. Which of the following is an example of emotional security control? Which of the following is an example of information security control? So A, employee training program. B, marketing campaign. C, customer support hotline and the office furniture procurement. Put your answer in the comment section. Okay. Nana said, A, hey, Kobe. Welcome, Kobe. Rita, Carl said, A. Hey. So, employee training program. Hmm, like, really? They have to train people? Why would they have? Is that cyber security? <laughs> They have to train people. They have to train the employee. Why do they want to train the employee? Hmm. Hmm, Kiruka, Cynthia, I see you. Welcome. Employee training program is the correct answer. So an employee training program is an example of information security control. <laughs> Marketing campaign for, for the wear. Um, I know, right? Training employee on security policy procedure and best practices helps mitigate risk associated with human error and strengthen the organization overall security posture. You see, if you don't train your employee, they don't know what they're doing. If they don't know what they're doing based on maybe their new hire, or they say there's a change in the system, or um, even if if it's if it's there's you have to train them annually. Some training is that to be every six months, so it depends on the the um, the, the project, right? So training there because some people they don't have any even even if they are not uh, tech tech they are not tech um, engineers or stuff. Everybody that works in organization based on new employer employee, maybe they are new a new project or maybe they are changing the system or even for their own role. You must train them because if not, they won't know. We call this security 
training, uh, security awareness. You know, some people do it everywhere you are. Even as a nurse, they will train you because you are taking care of patients and you have their data, PHI, um, personal health information, health records. Um, and if you are not in healthcare, you are in the credit card industry, you have sensitive data, you are in the uh, institutions like universities, you know, you have uh, the student records. So all these things, people need to be trained because you are the one that will go and be playing poker uh, on the system. You are the one that will download games. You are the one that will, you know, be going on Amazon to buy stuff. And then on the way as you are going to Amazon, you see something else you click on. So all these things can cause data breach because you can mistakenly download some things or click on the wrong things or they send you email. You don't know who, who is the sender. You click on the attachment. You have already, you know, you know it can cause malware, uh, virus attack, and all this stuff. So there are, you know, phishing attack on the organization. They send you a text to click on it. So smishing attack, they call you and they're trying to, sell something to you and then you fall victim for vision attack so all those things so you need to be trained so that you are aware even if it's not any of those social engineering it can be somebody talking to you physically and they collecting information from you without you actually knowing that you are giving them too much information so all these things are very important so you need to be trained yeah social engineering yes all these averages with human factors, yes. Administrative, thank you, Nana. Yeah, control, yes. And social engineering, yeah. Management control, administrative control. Very good. Thank you very much, guys. Very good, guys. So I hope you're enjoying it. If you're enjoying it, say yes. Give me a yes, yes, yes. Let me make sure you are following me. You are enjoying enjoying this and that you are sharing this on your social media platform. I hope you are sharing this. <laughs> oh, somebody said, yes, yes. Thank you. Yes, Prof. Yes. Thank you, Nana, Rita. Yes. Thank you. Somebody, Rita was asking, why do you use company computer for shopping? Oh, yes. When did that's all they have? They're sitting there. And they are, oh, let me quickly buy this thing. Or let me quickly do something. Or it's your break time. You quickly do something. You know, people do any different things. Or maybe Rita has never used it. Is is um, you know. <laughs> yeah. The people, well, you are talking about that now because everybody have their cell phone now. In the days that there were no cell phone, everybody fell victim of this. I'm talking about when we don't have cell phone. Okay, um, way back, you know, there was no cell phone when we were, we were in tech. Everybody's guilty of it because everybody play games on lunchtime. Well, let me do something, but it wasn't this bad then. They would all these uh, all these situations were not this bad. <laughs> and yeah, so and and some organizations you don't bring your phone in, so you are your phone is outside. So you have to, you are only in the mercy of, mercy of their computer. So you have to know what not to do. So when you go out at lunchtime, maybe you can do your shopping then when you take your phone. But doing all those things on, on the company website, um, computer is not, even some of them will actually set proxy on and block you. So you can't go on all those sites, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some some organization does didn't even say you shouldn't do that, but just not say. But things are changing now, so they they don't even have to tell you. They just block all those sites. You don't allow you to just do only certain things that some things you can't even do. Yeah. So which number six now? Let's go on. Uh, number six. Which document outlined the organization's approach to? Managing information security and form the basis of implementing um, an ISMS according to ISO 27001. Which document outlined the organization approach into managing information security and form the basis of implementing an ISMS according to ISO 27001? A. Information security policy. B. 
business continuity plan, C, employee handbook, and D, sales report. So which one? The outline, organizational approach, it outlines the approach. So I see a lot of A's, A, 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 let's see. Okay, information security policy, that's the correct answer. You all are correct. Elaborate, what is a policy? The information security policy outlines the organization's approach to managing information security and forms the basis for implementing an ISMS according to ISO, provide the high level direction, keyword, direction, and define management commitments to information security. So policy give, provide the high level direction. This is what we are going to do. This is the direction we are going with this. So that's a guide. That's a guide. It's going to guide us to that direction. So it gives us direction that's exactly this is the direction we are going so that you use that as a guiding you to what we want to do for that, for that particular organization. Thank you, guys. Okay, let's continue. Share, share, share with others. Let them see us. Let them come and enjoy. Now, question seven. What is this purpose of conducting Internal audits. Internal audit in the ISO 27001 framework. What is it? The purpose of conducting this. So, A, to identify security vulnerabilities. B, to evaluate financial performance. C, to assess employee satisfaction. And D, to monitor customer feedback i see a lot of a's a a a a a let's see what is going on okay it's a guys you are all correct you are all correct the purpose of conducting internal audits in the iso 27001 framework is to identify security vulnerability and assess the effectiveness of the Organization Information Security Management System, right? So the internal audits will now help ensure compliance hmm, with ISO 27001 requirements and drive continuous improvement in information security practices, right? So that is very important. The internal audit, it helps us making sure that we are in compliance, helping us and also helping with continuous improvement. Okay, very good. Question eight, which of the following is not a responsibility of top management in ISO 27001 framework? Not, underline not in in quotes a ensuring that the isms performs to the requirements conform to the requirement of the iso to 7001 mm. b provide resources for implementation and maintenance of the isms c develop marketing strategy <laughs> and d assigning roles and responsibility for information security management. Put your answer in the chat. I see Nana C, Olu C, Rita C, and T Tessa C. Okay, let's find out. You guys are correct because C is the answer. Developing marketing strategy for what? What are we marketing? <laughs> it's, not it's not the responsibility of the top management. Top management is responsible for ensuring that the ISMS conform to ISO 27001 requirement, provide resources that they need, right? <laughs> Rita said, your laugh give it out. <laughs> I know. And assigning roles and responsibility for information security management. So they are able to do all of this, but no market strategy. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. 
yes so yeah <laughs> it's funny right i just give you some hints like ah that should help right okay question nine what does pdca cycle stand for in the context of iso yeah thank you rita uh, thank you nana mm -hmm. they set the direction with the information management to meet compliance goal yeah that's the management right so we're looking at pdca plan develop check and act plan do control and audit predict define confirm and analyze prepare deliver check and approve what does it stand for pdca in iso okay i'm seeing some answers now mumuni said a olu said a okay what else rita said a okay okay so let's see kobe said a okay so the answer is b plan do check acts plan do check acts okay so the the pda is planned the dda is due the cda is check and the ada is act <laughs> also known as the demi cycle it's a continuous improvement framework used in the context of ISO 27001. It involves planning, which is establishing objective and process. Okay. And doing is implementing that plan that you put together and see is checking, monitoring and reviewing the results. Okay. And acting is taking corrective action and making improvements okay so that's the that is it for is b plan do check act i know it's new for a lot of you so don't forget to schedule a call with me to break into tech my question to you is today is what is your takeaway what is the new thing that you've just learned today any new thing that you learn in this today's session Put in the chat. I want to see what is something new that you've learned today. This com this concept developed by Edward Demi. Yeah, Demi, exactly. What is the new thing that you learned today in this session? What, what is the new thing? I want to read that. I want to see that. So don't forget to schedule a call with me. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Okay. So what did you learn today? I want to read it. <laughs> what is a new thing before we go that you learn? So don't forget, you can break into tech too. You can do well in tech. The trial box is available. There's a link to it. Get your copy nice on sale. You, if you look in, uh, under, the, um, on, under the comment section, you will see it. And even in the, um, it doesn't matter where you are. If you look under the description of this of this program, you will see there that I mentioned. You know the link to get the trial box. If you are, it's not only for cybersecurity. If you are doing Scrum product product owner, that you have your own as well. So grab the Agile trial box. So I will strongly encourage that. Okay, let me see what you just learned. This is the link for the trial bus. I just put it down there. So everybody said, okay, Rita said it. she learned about the PDCA and Olu as well. Yeah, ISO is similar to other framework. I don't know that. Yeah, yeah. Learn ISO help organization to avoid potential costly security bridges. Very good, Nana. So you get to learn new things there's new thing that rita learned today there's the new thing that olu learned today there's the new thing that tesha learned today and this is the new thing that nana learned today 
Thank you guys for joining me. I'm happy that uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, mommy say made a mistake with the 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 acronym PDCA. The good news that I know it now. Thanks a billion, Professor Timmy. You welcome uh, everybody, and you welcome um, no money for the beautiful testimony that you share with us. Um, spending your time to share with us concerning the prayer box, giving us a good review and feedback on that. And I hope you continue to enjoy your trailer box as you break into tech. And people that are still waiting, please get your copy and enjoy. So you don't have to start cracking your brain when you're going for interview. You just click it, listen to it anywhere on, the, on, your, on your, anywhere you are, in the bus, in the train, you are driving, you just put it on and you just play and you can just listen to it, you know, and it's going to make... Going for interview is just going to refresh your brain. The lady that got the 200K job, she was super excited because that really helped her. And now she got another job too. If you don't, if you know, you know. You know, don't be wasting time there. So, uh, Mumu is always happy to have grab your copy now, exactly. Even Mumu got the, he, he got the trailer bus before even starting the program that time. He got it before. So you can get it even be, without being the program. The trailer bus is going to always help you. It's a good addition to anybody's uh, library. Thank you guys so very much for being here. I love you all. I appreciate your time. Please share with others, your family members, as they um, you know, try to break into tech. Encourage them, advise them, and give back to them. That's a good give back. Okay. So I'm going to be ending on this note. Um, before I end, I'll just uh, share Momoni's testimony one more time. I will be closing. We'll be calling it a day. Good morning, Techies. Uh, my name is Momoni, and um, I recently invested in the AI uh, treasure box. Uh, for those preparing for interviews, it's a wonderful addition, uh, an asset, a resource to have in your toolkit. And um, yeah, it covers a range of topics uh, from resume and uh, LinkedIn uh, optimization. And it also goes into um, all the um, frameworks such as uh, NIST, RMF, ISO, uh, third party risk, vendor management, and PCI DSS. Uh, we have to remember uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Temi, she's gone into uh, a lot of pain and effort into crafting. Uh, creating this uh, product for us. Uh, we're leveraging uh, 30 years um, of experience in the IT cyberspace. And again, it's a wonderful investment to have uh, uh, going forward. And also, you can also gift it to uh, the, um, the young ones in our family looking to get into the tech world. Uh, it's, uh, it's a wonderful resource to have. And um, I personally have never regretted. Um, it's a must have for every um, professional, uh, cybersecurity professional. And uh, yeah, you never uh, regret um, having one, as I found it very, very, very useful. And I wish you all the best in your journey, and uh, bye for now. Okay, guys. Thank you, Momoni. Thank you, everybody, for being here. I wish you all a wonderful day. See you on Friday on Clubhouse. And also, if you need anything, reach out to me, schedule a call, break into tech, keep the job, and go on the job. Love you all. Stay safe. Stay blessed. Bye, everybody.